Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Mikhail Hellstrom. I have taught political science at the University of Alberta and the University of Calgary in the past. And I'm, I'm not presently doing so, but I'd like to get back to it at some point. Long story. I'll be happy to answer questions on that if you're curious. Um, I stumbled into what I'm about to talk to on a, on a bit of a banana peel, really. Um, it was actually a friend on Facebook who posted the um, uh, gamification education video from Extra Credits that, that made me start um, uh, looking into this. And as I went ahead, I found 3D Game Lab, which is a web tool, a learning management system really, to implement uh, game design into learning assessment and uh, presenting the curriculum to students. So I'm gonna, I've already done a paper on 3D Game Lab, and this is a continuation of that, really. Um, the paper is under review, uh, under uh, revision, so, but I'll, I'll, I'll be happy to, to expand the 3D Game Lab if I don't cover enough here uh, now. So uh, when I started working with that web tool, uh, I was still sort of stuck in a particular format, and then, then I found Sheldon, and I found, found that maybe this would actually bring the tool to its full potential. So this uh, talk that is centered on those two courses at the University of Calgary um, during the winter term last year, uh, where I did Introduction to Public Administration and uh, uh, Comparative Politics Post-Industrial States, or Global North, depending on what terminology you prefer. And uh, for once, I'm going to say that I failed, which probably what shouldn't be said. Uh, but I think, I think I made some very interesting learnings from that experience, and that's what I wanted to share. Shelton's multiplayer classroom, I, I found out about during a, a conference on gamification and education. Uh, what he did uh, was basically to gamify the learning achievement. So instead of uh, giving out grades on a paper, you've written a paper, you now have a B. Uh, everyone starts out with a zero at the start of uh, the term. And then I, I just stole his line there. So the syllabus presentation in the early stages of the term, uh, I said, you all have an F. Dramatic pause see very defiant and angry students looking at me because I'm the most unfairest professor ever. But if you work, you complete the quests, you gain awards, you can achieve the grade. Your, uh, uh, that is your objective. And, and then you see that those eyes go from you're unfair to all oh, right, game on. And, and then we start. And that, that's a fantastic feeling because then they're, they're motivated from the start. Of course, some of them are still confused, but when they start grokking what this system is about, it usually tends to work really well. Uh, he also uh, introduces Bartle's taxonomy. Uh, I'm guessing that most of you will be familiar with that. Anyone not familiar? Okay. Uh, Bartle uh, introduced uh, a classification of gamer types. Why do people enjoy games? And found that gamers will enjoy the same game for very different reasons. And he basically found four different types of players. Uh, what Sheldon did was taking those uh, different types and then translating them into roles for the students to play. Now, Sheldon uh, works in game design. So this also weaves into uh, project-based learning. Uh, so th they were divided into groups, and they were all going to pitch their different uh, uh, suggestions for, for a computer game, and then develop a production team. So they got their different roles then within that production team. And that gave a coherence for the class throughout the term, and, and clearly defined uh, objectives. I and mean, that's a classic problem in group work. In, in uh, teaching is how do you get everyone to feel that they have a role to play in the group? How do we avoid that one person does all the work and someone else is piggybacking on that and so on? And that's pr pretty much what Sheldon tried to counter. So he has these roles 
uh, where, where he would say that, that the writer is kind of the ranger because they're exploring new territory, uh, the producer is the community builder, the tech lead is the killer to root out all the bugs, and so on and so forth. Uh, and and uh, that gives all the, the uh, people familiar with D&D &D a whole lot of um, joy going in, I guess. So, and third then, the continuous role play. Uh, writing uh, the exams and doing quizzes become, becomes defeating bosses. He introduces this uh, game discourse and language and jargon which changes the culture in the classroom. Uh, and uh, they have to design that uh, game and then pitch it in character to an industry authority. That's, that's sort of the, the final point of the term. Uh, and he also used the games, the, the classroom space, the game space. It, it merges these terminologies. It's no longer a learning space a learning and game space. Uh, and, and a classroom like this would be pretty terrible for that. What you want to have is movable tables, and then you have a zone over there where they're supposed to be doing these things, and a zone over there. So he's using the physicality for the room to promote learning as well. So this is where I started that 3D game lab. This is, this is 3D game lab, developed by uh, Dr. Chris Haskell and Lisa Dolly at Boise State University. Some of you might have seen it, I don't know. Uh, and uh, they get changed this name now to Resli, and, and the, the graphics of the user interface have been updated, but this is pretty much what my students saw when they came in. They, you'll have the, the progress bar here at the top that tells them how many XP they have won over the term by completing the quests. Uh, you'll have the quests uh, that you can choose from. This is from my own screen, by the way, when I went through um, the, the teacher can for 3D game work. So they use this interface to teach people how to use their interface. Um, and uh, like Sheldon does, you start with zero and you advance. Uh, but also here, this, this menu means that the students are coming to a smorgasbord, basically. You can railroad them if you want. Only start with the one quest, you have to fulfill that before you advance. But you can also have a spread of different choices for them to, to uh, pick their way through the curriculum going for what they feel is the most interesting. Uh, and uh, this is from Haskell's white paper on this. Basically, he had 100% A's, or 92%. Uh, and uh, if you look at uh, Davidson, who also works in a very recent paper uh, at the U of A in nursing, she had 100% A's. A third of them had about A+. Plus, I so uh, they don't stop working. They keep working because it's fun and interesting and who can get the most points. Even though this is, this is the A level here. And that's, you know, yeah. I didn't have quite those results and I don't have an ethics review approval to talk about my students' grades, so I can't. But I can say that, that I was very pleased with the results. Now, I was still organizing things by topic. So in comparison to politics, for instance, the term would start with, uh, oh, let's do U.S. politics, and then, because in Canada that is compared to politics, uh, and then U.K. politics, and France, and Germany, Japan, all the major topics that you do in comparative, and move on. Uh, so that's my topic, and that's me telling them what to do, when to do it. And I wanted to move towards Sheldon, where you have um, the, the continuous play, and where I leverage uh, Barton. So this is uh, from the public administration course, where I tried to create character classes at the outstage, outset of the, the, the term, where I told them, okay, you're going to have these, this role within this public administration. It's a public agency. Uh, this is all located in British Columbia. I want the, the municipality here, uh, the city of Vancouver. I want the, 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 the provincial uh, agency. I want the feds. Divide into groups. Uh, and I wanted to support that with game design elements. Basically, I wanted to, them to win points towards their character's career advancement over the, the, the course of the term. Uh, and, of course, they, the, the equivalent in the, the comparative course couldn't be public administration only, so there they represented different countries and different uh, roles in politics. So you had uh, the head of uh, government, 
you had uh, some civil servants acting as the support class, that's the clerics. Um, you had um, the rangers being the journalists, and uh, academics being the wizards to analyze what their friends were doing, and so on and so forth. And I, I had some problems with this. One of, the, one of the problems I had was that I had a very short time of building this. Uh, this was an emergency appointment, so I basically designed two courses in three weeks while fixing the logistics to go to Calgary. Uh, so it wasn't very optimal. And one of the problems I had was the game design, that I, I couldn't make this, this status game work very well in, in the public agency uh, course. I did work it better in the comparative course because the roles were more clearly defined. If you are an activist and representing a particular membership in the setting, then the, the motivation for the character, if you will, is clearer than, uh, than what I managed to achieve for uh, the public agency uh, roles. So this is an example then here of the class as an episode. This is one of the, the quests, basically. They come to class and I want it to be a continuous narrative where they experience what happens within the public agency or within their country or between the countries uh, as I go to create that continuous narrative. What, what's, what's happening to us next week? Can I do the West Wing in my course and maintain that just dramatic tension and interest for the course that way? Uh, but I still had my quest assignments organized by topic. Uh, so there was an as a synchronous element to this that was disconnected to the narrative. And I wasn't too pleased with that at the end. So my, my recommendation then would be that instead, I would re if I were to do this again, I would organize the assignments, the quest assignments, based on character class, instead of by topic. So instead of saying, this is German politics, study it, I would say, you're a journalist, okay, this is what happens to you or your character. Something happens and you have to react to it. So uh, how did it go? Uh, I want more time to calibrate the design, and it's this balance between how would I use points to promote the status of a politician character versus how do I retain enough time to uh, evaluate their learning, because that's really why I'm in the classroom. I, I shouldn't be distracted by, by the points too much, but I want the, the points to feed the play so that we get a decent approximation of the incentive structures they're, they're working on. Uh, and, uh, of course, I said it was under time constraints, I want more time next time. Um, but I do think there is, there is potential here. Uh, one of the problems I have uh, when I'm looking at how my students react is if you saw um, Professor Simkin's presentation before lunch, you saw all the slides of the, the sage of the stage and passive learning and lectures, it's the same in political science in comparative and, and Canadian and public administration. So that's the reference points the students have. <coughs> and when they come in to, to what I'm doing, they get very enthusiastic because suddenly they do things and things are happening and so on. So I can't really say um, what happened in the 2015 classes compared to what I did in 2014. Because it kind of just gets blurred for the students. It's new, it's active learning, this is awesome and cool, let's do more of it. That's basically because they're reference points of the lectures. But as, as we saw in the previous uh, end note here, uh, I, I would like to, to explore more uh, with the proper research design and so on. Unfortunately, um, I, I was a sectional, so I didn't qualify for uh, acting as a PI. So I, I, have, to, I have to schmooze some tenured professor to submit the application for me. Um, but there are potentials for that, so um, yeah, that, that's, that's where we're at. Uh, and um, I'll be happy to answer questions later.